Yo, welcome to the company of discomfort. My name is as usual Michael and um, we're still here in the not so busy work week to talk about a lot of movies and other things. Isn't that lovely? And now we're gonna talk about that movie. I'm not sure how well you can see that. So let's take a look at uh, this. It's called a uh, happy end. It's a very nice, great movie that I was looking forward a lot, and I didn't even really know why. I saw the trailer a couple of times. Ah, oh, this looks like a movie that I wanna watch. Um, I even have the script here in this uh, cute uh, magazine. There's the script of another movie that we're gonna talk about, as uh, the Young Strangers, uh, which was very good as well, even though it uh, made me. Uh, riot mentally but we're gonna get to that in a different time um anyway so happy and i watched it on the same day like another movie that we're gonna talk in another video um that's called a super happy forever it was a very happy day mostly and um just to get this out of the way, i think happy end is a better movie than super happy forever um but yeah, I didn't know much. It was one of these newcomer director comes and does something and that's really cool movies that we have a lot this year because Japanese cinema is pretty cool. And um, the director is called a uh, Neo Soda, uh, probably pretty young human, who has done some stuff before, but mostly documentaries. For example, that Ryuichi Sakamoto Opus documentary uh, that was last year. Um, I haven't watched that yet, but if you work with Hiroichi Sakamoto, you're probably quite uh, skilled, I guess. Um, yeah, and he made a dystopian, uh, very critical social commentary movie that's actually a lot of fun. I thought it's gonna be super depressing and uh, soul crushing. Uh, no, it's, it's a quite entertaining movie, just to take that away. Let's go through the cast very quickly, because most of the people in this movie are completely unknown, like Hayato Kurihara or Yukito Hidaka. Um, then we have Yuta Hayashi, who has done some movies, I guess. Uh, the Sound of Grass was a pretty big thing a few years ago, and he's in another new movie, that's coming out this year that's called Oasis, which looks quite interesting as well. As so we have Shina Peng, and we have Arazi, we have Kirara Inori, who was in It's a Summer Film, I love It's a Summer Film. And we have Pushim, we have Ayumu Nakajima, who has done some movies, for example, Wheel of Fortune and Fantasy, uh, The Parades, Asakusa Kid, and uh, here, here, Desert of Namibia, all these things. And we have Makiko Watanabe, who is one of the people who worked a lot with uh, Shion Sono, uh, for example, Love Exposure, Himizu, uh, but she did stuff like Still the Water or Small Slow But Steady and was in Rununi Kenshin. Then we have uh, Shiro Sano, a uh, well-known and liked face, uh, for example, in Violent Cop, um, Godzilla Mosra and King Ghidorah, Giant Monster All Out Attack. He was in a Pokemon movie. Uh, he was in The Rocking Horseman. He was in a lot of stuff. Lady Battle Cop. Good movie. Uh, we have Masaru Yahagi uh, from Godzilla Minus One. We have uh, Yusuke Yukimatsu. Didn't do anything else. Uh, we have Shunsaku Yajima, who was in Super Happy Forever. Uh, Neo Soda himself appears, I think, just uh, as a voice, um, with Motomasa Okui, who was in Detective Chinatown 3, and Yoshi Kurumura, who did uh, one movie that's called Tokyo King, I don't know. So mostly people who we don't really know or we haven't seen that much. You know, some popular faces are there, but... Uh, most of them are pretty young because they're supposed to be high school students in the not so far future and in that future Japan has a lot of much more foreign citizens which is 
not so bad, I think, because I am one. And uh, yeah, it's all about how badly they are getting treated and uh, how unfair society is, um, all these things. The director himself was very aware of uh, issues like that. For example, after the big uh, earthquake in Fukushima, which um, made him, for example, learn about that earthquake in 1923, where uh, Koreans were accused of poisoning wells and doing other stuff, and a lot of people got murdered by the government, which is not very great. And uh, yeah, this still keeps going on, not that Koreans are all the time being murdered, but uh, basically open racism. I mean, um, like many foreigners in Japan know, like this, the police who come to you and are like, hey, you're a foreigner, uh, show us your ID for no reason. Yeah, I mean, usually if they did that to me, that happened to me twice. They were very polite, uh, very friendly, but still just being like, you're a foreigner, show us your ID is uh, not great. At least pretend that it's a routine control and you just check random people and not only foreigners because it's pretty stupid if you're the police and you admit that you're openly racist. Um, not great. Um, anyway, so we have these issues here that he was aware and he um, uh, was very aware of like Black Lives Matters and all these things. So he wanted to tell people about these issues and did this very well. And I think for this movie we don't really need a spoiler section because I think it's not so much about the plot it's uh, more about the topics that he tackles here and the vibes and uh, yeah i think we don't really need to talk too much about the story details unless i can rewatch it someday and uh, pick it really apart but just for, for a review let's uh, skip the spoilers today so lucky you you can watch until the end or maybe i'm lucky because if you can bear my rumbling rumbling um you watched until the end cool anyway so yeah we have so this um racism issues and in this near future the world became a little bit strange um, for example the movie starts pretty much with these kids going into a, a sneaking into a club like a techno rave club dance music whatever i'm, I'm not an expert for that kind of music. The time when I really enjoyed electronical music was uh, like mid 90s. That's what, 30 years ago? I'm f old. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, they go into this club and the police storms the club and kicks everyone out. And then we get one of the central elements of this movie like we have this duo two boys one is uh, japanese and one is japanese but yeah technically korean like has a korean passport but he's i think he's born there and he has spent his life there. he's basically the same as the others he's just his parents are from a different country and so the police we have a scene like this many many times in this movie and every time the police is like to the one guy oh uh, you're just a high school student you can go uh, you we will take you with us uh, we don't like what you're doing even though they do the same so yeah it's a very openly racist uh, police that's um, yeah just very authentic I would say I mean, I, I heard stories that are much worse than my experience. I'm, I would say I'm still very lucky. But uh, yeah, especially um, people with, uh, let's say, darker skin. Uh, I heard some really, really terrible stories. Like a university student got uh, checked every day until his Japanese friends went to the police with him to complain about it. Because, you know, if Japanese people complain... It matters if foreign people complain. Nobody cares. Yeah. So um, that's the, the one big thing that's going on here. And the other big thing 
um, is the school that gets basically a panopticon. It has, I, I forgot the name, it's so bad. Um, it has a cute name that resembles panopticon. You, you know, there's this idea of a prison that's basically a circle, and in the middle is the watch place, and from the cells you can't see if any anyone is watching you, so you must suggests that someone is watching all the time so you should be careful every second of the day what you do and that's basically the same here just that someone is actually always watching because there are cameras everywhere and they have some like social credit system that resembles that i just read it about the new uh, about china in the news and i'm not sure if they actually started that i think they did but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure about this. I don't want to spread a false uh, uh, false rumors. Rumors are usually false, right? Um, or at least not proven. I don't want to spread anything here. But uh, at least I read that they were thinking about uh, implementing a social credit system. So if you do something wrong, you get minus points. And um, yeah, basically the same happens here. So if you do something bad and the camera see that you get a minus point there's a huge screen where everyone can see what's happening so you are publicly shamed which the japanese government likes very much uh, we remember um, the good old covid times when they asked all the bars and restaurants to close in the evening and if they didn't they were just publicly announcing here this spa doesn't follow the rules which was kind of an advertisement uh, yeah I guess even more people are, oh, I can go there. I'm not sure how well that works. But yeah, in general, Japan is pretty big on publicly shaming people. However you feel about that, it's the same that's happening in the movie. And yeah, it's a pretty uneven, unfair system. For example, there are two two incidents here. One is uh, just for the fun of it, and one is a little bit more serious. For example, there's one scene when a guy from the self defense forces comes to do a lecture, probably to recruit the students, and because he comes, all the foreigners are being sent out because you don't want foreigners in your military. Like, why would you, right? Um, no, they can't kill as effectively as your own people, or maybe, I don't know, they betray you because they have some alliance to a different... <sighs> no? um, you understand. <laughs> um, anyway, so, um, yeah, so they get sent out and the camera just says, oh, they left the class early, minus points. And another thing is, um, there are two boys somewhere around the corner where the camera can't see them smoking and another one comes to tell them you can't do this you're evil so they throw the cigarettes on the ground in front of him so the camera thinks oh he dropped the cigarette on the ground so he gets a minus point he takes it up so he's smoking on the school ground he gets a minus point he throws it back down he gets a minus point you see what i mean it's completely unfair and uh, crazy and so the students um try to and this uh, in a very uh, old-fashioned manner, like the times we saw proper student protests or left-wing um, activities, let's say, uh, maybe of the more inappropriate kind. Um, it's been a while. And uh, yeah, it's being portrayed here very well. So how they try to get the school back to a more bearable uh, state and yeah of course we have a little bit of this um, delinquent feeling yeah uh, we have a little bit of this very funny this is one of the only movies who, that's set in the future that handles old movies I mean in, in, in sci-fi sci movies it's basically always the same uh, it's always like people still listen to the same old mu music that we are listening to. There's no new mu music. It doesn't really exist. And they all always listen to stuff that's old even now. And um, 
They never establish new music because it would be really difficult to do to establish sci-fi music, so I understand that part. But why don't they use contemporary music as the old music that became a classic? So I feel like nothing ever became a classic since like the stuff that's already a classic now, so that's very weird. Um, but uh, yeah, here they say uh, this electronic techno stuff is the old music and um it's basically getting getting treated like i don't know uh, like the beatles are being treated now so people are or like people just defend real music against ai music about ai music i will probably talk in a video soonish because a uh, good uh, human uh, tortured me to watch a uh, carol and uh, tuesday and uh, so far i watched two episodes and it's very good um yeah, but anyway, he's like, oh, yeah, the new music doesn't have anything new, so I like the old stuff. That's in this case, yeah, electronic, techno, a house, whatever. And um, so he's all about the clubbing, and they try to get some equipment to um, build a club or something, or do a rave, I don't know. Um, even though that uh, was a little bit sad, that's the only like point in the story, that they gather all this equipment, and it doesn't really lead to any big party scene. <laughs> I would have liked to have a party scene at the end. Would have been nice. But basically, yeah, DJing is the thing that the old people do. That's really funny here. I, I like that a lot. And so we have this delinquent element, we have the music element, we have a uh, yeah, this left-wing protest element that's very nice. So it's all very political, very left-wing, if you don't like that, if you're more of the uh, ABBA fan, um, this movie is uh, sadly not for you, uh, maybe you can watch Godzilla Minus One and be happy with that. I'm not sorry for keep picking on Godzilla Minus One. Um, this this here is a much better movie. Um, some people compare to Shinji Somai stuff like Typhoon Club, which is maybe not so wrong. And yeah, it lives a lot from just the atmosphere, the setting, the vibes. That's all really, really great. The cast is wonderful. The conclusion of everything is pretty great. And... Um, even though it's a bit depressing and the whole situation is really nasty. Um, I think it's first great that someone actually shows these problems, these issues, um, in a very nice, well-made movie. And um, yeah, even though it seems like this dry social criticism, it's actually a very entertaining movie that's not that dark. I mean, it's pretty dark. But um, not that dark. It's still entertaining. It's still fun. Uh, yeah, it's just a really, really great movie. And uh, for me, of all these newcomer movies, maybe the best one this year. That's a good chance. Uh, yeah, I like that a lot. And I would like to watch it again, but I think it's already out of cinema. So, too bad. Um I will have to wait for a release, but I hope there will be a release. But yeah, it's, it's really, really wonderful, amazing. I love it. If you have the chance to watch I'm sure this will show up on some festivals. Like, hello, Nippon Connection, uh, please show this movie. It's amazing. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say about it. And then we should just finish the video. Thank you very much for watching. See you soon. Um, just wanted to mention... Subscribers are going up, that makes me very happy. Thank you very much. If you haven't subscribed, consider. I usually don't say that, so forgive me once. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you for watching. This channel is going slowly, slowly, slowly up. I'm happy. Thank you. See you.